Brandon, I got to tell you, man, I am so stoked to be talking to you again. I mean, you wowed me last year at Frost, and this time you just you just blew it away with Breakout. I mean, I absolutely, Thank you. I absolutely love this movie. I mean, this movie was awesome, and I, I love a good action flick, you know, no matter how low budget it, or indie it is, but this was a great film, and kudos Thank to you, you on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a little bit different than Frost, I, I guess. A little, little, yeah. little bit better, a little bit more positive ending. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I understand Devaney was the one who came up with the story. How, how how did she come up? How did she come up with the idea for this? And how did you get involved with it? So, um, um, the distributor who was also the financer, Uncourt. Okay, now I'm now I'm fully ready. By the way, um, <laughs> um, they uh, wanted to. They don't normally finance movies, and they started to recently. And our friend James Bresick, who was the EP on uh, Frost um had uh put us back together uh, they, they had previously um released a movie we did called crossbreed a few years ago and mm -hmm. so we were familiar with uncorked and um james asked for a number of just like three line pitches to send them and so we thought okay let's send the safest things possible but then put our own spin on it so we had one that was about like black ops guys fighting the dark web or something uh, I forgot what one of the other ones was. And then we had this one, which really was just like Die Hard in a Prison. Um, and um, we thought of the most basic plot we could and the most basic name so that it wouldn't get changed. Because um, that always throws you off when, you know, you spend like nine months talking about a movie and suddenly it has a different name. Um, yeah. And we, we knew this would be the one that 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 Uncorked would go for. Um, so really, it was just a matter of finding a really simple story where we could put the kind of like character relationships that we want to see, the kind of villain we want to see and cast really strong actors. Yeah. And I got to say that, I mean, the cast in this, I can't say enough. I mean, Louis Mandalore hands down is one of my all time favorite actors. Yeah. And I'm glad that he's getting to kick some serious butt again in a lead role, like first name this time around again. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while. And I mean, he's just great as this, you know, he, he does really well as an action star. I mean, what was it like working with him? Um, I've known Lewis since 2007, six, something like that. And we actually didn't realize we'd known each other that long until we were, do we were um, in Thailand doing the movie Battle for Saipan. And we pulled out a picture of us having dinner with Marty Cove and a bunch of other people that was like 15 years before. We're like, Jesus, I've known you too long. And so I've basically known him longer than most people I'm not related to at this point. Um, <laughs> but the role was always meant to be Lewis's. And I feel that when Lewis and Scott Adkins and Jesse Johnson did Debt Collector, um, that was like kind of the template for this kind of movie where you have a very simple premise, but really deep characters. Yeah. Um, like Debt Collector, I feel like is like transcendent for both him and Scott. Oh, um, definitely. So from the beginning, it was always supposed to be Lewis as this character. Um, after that, um, like the Brian Krauss character wasn't always Brian, but I can't picture any other actor uh, playing him at this point. Yeah, um, Brian, Brian is one of those who could play either good or bad guys, and he, yeah. he plays like 125% of the role. And I love that he played more of a mastermind here, and, and yeah. he's brilliant. I mean, he just brought this charisma to the role. Yeah, so many people know him as, you know, like a heartthrob from Charmed, which I've actually personally never watched. Um, I didn't either. Was, yeah, <laughs> Devin was friends with him just from meeting him at different, like, events and stuff. And um, when the original actor couldn't do it, we went to another actor. He couldn't do it. Um, then we went to Brian, and Cork said, yeah, that's great. Uh, we, we love him because I guess they like Charmed because they have uh, Shannon Doherty in some movies, too. Um, but anyway... Uh, uh, Devin, he called Brian and he's, and he's the first thing he said was, you know, guys, I'm not, I'm not like pretty boy right now. Um, and we said that, no, that's great. Cause it's the bad guy. Um, yeah. cause he, he was, he had lost some weight and he had this, that big kind of thick hair that he has in it. And so he didn't really look like, you know, he did on charm, but that, that was good because he looked like someone who could have been sitting in a prison cell for X number of years. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I just recently saw him in, um, homestead which is like a horror western i just yeah. saw that 
And then before that, I actually talked to him a few years ago when he did the demonologist where he yeah. played that. And um, like, he's such a nice guy, off, like off, you know, when he's doing inner, you know, talk about yeah. it and, you know, yeah, he may not be pretty boy anymore, but he still proves he's got it. He's got that yeah. charisma that he brought, uh, I'm guessing the charms. Of course, yeah. I remember I remember him from Sleepwalkers. That's right. That's yeah. you know, I remember him from like, Return to the Blue Lagoon. Uh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. I and hands down, I gotta say this, man. Christos Andrews, I've already seen him in Murder Anyone from James yeah. Brassack. And he pulled he does a wonderful performance here. I swear to God, I think this is gonna be his year, the way things are going with him. Yeah. Because he yeah, was um, great. Yeah, uh, Bressack had had him in um um, one of the Bruce Willis movies that he did, and he like highly, highly recommended him. And I, I spoke to him, to Lu- to Lewis. Sorry, too many names that end in S. Um, <laughs> I spoke to him a few weeks before we shot, that, and it was just supposed to be you know five ten minutes like a meet and greet, and we ended up speaking for two three hours. So he's someone who he's a young guy, but he really cares about doing a good job, and he really puts the work in, which I feel like not enough people do now. Like everyone's more concerned with your social media numbers as opposed to bettering your craft. Exactly. Um, but he's he's definitely one who is different. He's kind of old school in that way. Yeah, and I like here he he had such great chemistry with Lewis yeah. as this estranged father and son duo, and this is why this is why I liked him in this movie. I mean that yeah. estrangement, and then you see him like, in one sense working for Brian, and then but it's still he's still feeling conflicted about what's going on. Yeah. They actually didn't really meet until we filmed the scene um, of them at the visitation room in the prison early on in the movie, which was day one. Um, And we kind of did that intentionally so that there would be this, you know, they were going head to head and there was a familiarity, but there was something separate from them as well. And that just ended up being a great scene to watch them do because we did it six, seven times, and they put a different spin on it every time. Lewis actually draws tears, which I'm not sure he's done in an action movie before. Um, and and that kind of, that was on day one, and that really set the tone for the rest of the shoot and got everyone really just into it and emotionally invested. Exactly, and I gotta tell you, man, and we gotta pay respects to Tom Sizemore, you know. Yeah. He's no longer with us, but he made such an impact in his role as the negotiator. And he, like here, he, he just did, he just shows yeah. What a great actor he was again. And, you know, what was it like, you know, now knowing that he's no longer with us, what was, what was, what are your memories with Tom on the set? You know, I, I wish that we knew that that was going to be a one and done with him. Um, at the end of the day, we traded phone numbers and, you know, said goodbyes and, you know, you never know, you, you never know when the last time you're going to speak to someone is. Um, I, and this is actually, I believe the first movie of his that's been released posthumously. And at first I felt kind of strange about that because you're, you're kind of carrying someone's legacy on in, in a way. Um, but um, Devin and I were talking and we're actually quite proud because he does really well in this movie and you get to see a spark of why he had that career that he had, which was like a one in a million kind of thing. You know, you see yeah. his charisma, his kind of sense of humor that was really kind of underrated. You see his charm and you see a lot of his nuance. There's like, I would see him do these really little things with just a movement of his eye or, you know, a muscle in his cheekbone, like moving that just speak volumes more than dialogue. So it's, it's, I, I really didn't like that as he was ailing, there were so many articles talking about the trouble he had been into. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, plus, you know, so many people have issues, whether they're out in the open or not, especially um, in show business, for lack of a better word. So I, I felt it was tacky. And I can only speak from my experience with him, which was which was great. And I wish there got to be more. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, my wife and I recently watched um, one of his asylum films, Meg, Mega Megalodon Rising. And yeah. like he made such an impact in that movie. And like once he shot on the screen, like the movie was, I knew it was cheesy, but for some mm. for some reason he he helped make like make that movie watchable the way his performance was. So, yeah, you know, that spark, that just kind of effortless thing about him that just works, and, and that, that's something that I don't know if you can train. It just you kind of have to have it or you don't. Yeah, and he he naturally had it, and yeah. 
wow. I mean, and like I said, he played the negotiator here. And, you know, his teams with Lewis, you know, where they're interacting through the, you know, the communication channels. I mean, it, it just showed the, like what an yeah. impact he had in the, in the film. There's some little things. Um, actually, there's a scene that wasn't in the script that's in the movie that takes place, I believe, right before Lewis's character goes to take a bullet out of his leg. Um, that's just him sitting in the car with his partner, who's uh, Victor, one of the kids from the Sandlot. Oh, yeah. Uh, bro- yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just Tom sitting there and Victor says, well, what's wrong? You OK? He's like, gosh, nothing, nothing. That was just some extra um, stuff at the end of a scene that just felt really poignant um, because, you know, he took this really basic character and he gave him heart. He gave him a sense of humor and he you could you could tell there was a thinking person there as opposed to just, you know, someone who's going to show up and shout a bunch of commands at the bad guy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that was such a great job on that. And the action scenes were great, too. Not just firepower, but, you know, we get to see Lewis go hand in hand with some thugs in this. And yeah. I always love it when I see it to see Lewis getting to show some of that stuff. I remember in, in uh, Champions where he played a martial arts expert avenging his brother. And then martial law with Sam Hung the first season. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't say enough. And I was disappointed when he wasn't in season two, but because I yeah. felt like him and Samo had that teacher student relationship that could have yeah. could have driven it further. But to see that he had all these amazing skills and got to show him in this film, especially, yeah. I mean, that's just amazing. And kudos to the I don't stuff. Think a, I don't think enough people really realize that he's the real deal with, with this stuff. When he was a teenager, he was like, ranked really high up in his weight class worldwide as a boxer um and then he eventually you know called his big brother and came to la and uh eventually became an actor but he his intent and his training was as a fighter as an athlete and he he, one of the great things about him is he can do both he can believably be you know the, the comic brother in my big fat greek wedding or he can be a very soulful character but he can also kick your ass um and like he can really kick he can really kick your ass not just pretend to um yeah yeah, so in this movie and then in battle for saipan right after which is a world war ii movie but more of an action movie set against world war ii we really got to have some fun in in both of these that's Um, awesome yeah and i will say is for those who really want to know how how badass lewis is um scott atkins's uh, art of action interview series he actually has lewis as one of his guests and yes. So they can get a full background of what Lewis's uh, fighting skills are. And when I saw that episode, I was blown away. And I and I knew right down like Lewis is definitely high up there, one of my favorite all time favorite actors. So if yeah. anyone asks, he, like, he's, he's, he's always actor? trained. He's never stopped training. And yeah. you can't say that for a lot of people. No, and I like that. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like there's actors who train for a movie, then they're done, then, then they stop. Yeah. You know, but then there's ones who are dedicated to like keep going, like Lewis. Yeah. And, that's that's what makes them worthy action heroes nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, he's someone who has he still kind of has that everyman thing where you just want to relate to him and root for him. Um, yeah, that's 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 something special. And like I said, I don't feel like he gets enough credit for for having that quality. Yeah, he should, man. And hands down, you know, I've, I've heard from like so many people. He's like the nicest guy you can talk to, and you know, he's all for it. He, you know, he loves the fans. And like, and you mentioned the comedy thing. I mean, he's one of the funniest guys I've seen, you know, yeah. from my big frack, even deck collectors. He had that comic, yeah. that comic style to him. And I think for him, it's like one of a kind. And, you know, it's, that's why, that's why I, I love him as an actor so much. Yeah. And he also helps bring out really good things in other actors as well. He, he gives um, and just keeps giving. And that's, that's really the most you can ask for for that you know relationship with with the people you're working with exactly so how long did shooting take and um were there any difficulties that you faced during <laughs> this time around you probably did a lot so, of <laughs> i think scott adkins has famously talked about how back in the van damme days you get six weeks to two months to shoot a movie yeah and now you get two to three weeks to do the same movie yeah pretty um, much. that applies here too um what we had on our side though was that it was really one central location even the handful of scenes that don't take place in the prison were still Mm -hmm. shot within the prison grounds somewhere so that actually helped us just keep moving 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 and so much of the movie was really lewis and i 
batting ideas back and forth. And, you know, we have that type of chemistry where we trust one another and can just kind of go, go, go. So of course there were hard things. Every movie's hard, but I think because of the dynamic between, uh, us, uh, Devaney, uh, Lewis Bryan, Christos, everyone, it made for a really enjoyable shoot. And everyone just really got into the characters because, you know, like I said, even though it's a, a simple story, there's some meat there. So everyone was just kind of pumped and feeding off of each other. So like I said, every movie has issues. Every movie's tough. But because of this, it was it was fun because of the people we got to work with. That's awesome. I got to say this, the, the way the movie ended, um, I could definitely see a sequel down the road. I, I'm hoping oh, I this said that too. Seems open, I've actually never open, thought that. I, I hadn't even thought that yet. Now I'm like, huh, do I got to do a new one? I got to do another movie with Lewis? Oh my, we've done like eight movies together now. Um, <laughs> you could be a dream team. Look at, I mean, yeah. there was Scott Atkins and Isaac Florentine for a long time. Yeah. They were the they were the dream team. And then, you know, Scott was with Jesse for a number of yeah. films. And, and, I, and I'm kidding, of course. I, I'd love to have him in everything. Um, <laughs> But I don't know. I guess I guess we'll see. I mean, if someone if if Uncorked really wants a sequel since they own it, I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping there will be because that I mean the way the movie ended, I could I could definitely see a, a sequel and uh, yeah. somewhere down that road. You know, so um, without just... giving away too much, someone had actually mentioned um, a way to do a sequel that I never would have thought of. Um, that has to do with with Brian, um, but. We'll see. It's it's hard to really say any more than that without you know spoiling the end of the movie. Exactly. But, yeah. uh, that, that's why I didn't want. It. <laughs> like, like a spoiler, yeah, yeah. I, I could see it. I could see a ski, sequel, like possibly a sequel down that road. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So well, I guess we'll see. Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you after now that this is out? What's coming up next? I know Debbie's um, directing her first film. I know she's going to yes. be doing that. She that's actually wrapped uh, production on it a few weeks ago, so it's in post now. Awesome. Um, and Cleopatra, who uh, financed and distributed Frost, um, is behind that movie. Um, it actually wasn't supposed to be her feature directing debut at first, but I, I didn't want to do uh, something that leaned into horror anymore. And but that and that's what they wanted. And so we decided to pitch her as the director, and and Cleopatra loved it. Um, so yeah, that's in post now. It'll probably be finished in a month or so. Um, one of the 95 Lewis and my movies comes out this summer called the flood. Um, I know that's another one we did in Thailand with uh, Saban. Um, and there's a couple that I wrote that Lewis directed, and I may have mentioned them before um, called three days in Malay. It's, uh, it's a, it's another war movie, but unlike the one that I did, it's more of a drama. Um, and then a movie called operation blood hunt, which is kind of um, Hellboy meets blade. Uh, maybe in tone. Um, at least that was mine and Lewis's point of view on it. Yeah. Um, and then there's some other stuff coming up. Um, Lewis and I have other stuff that we're teaming up on. And I'm also working with uh, Marco Zoror from John Wick 4. Nice. Uh, he's a good summer. guy too. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. we just, uh, like I was saying um, before we officially got on the show, um, I was in a hotel for a couple of weeks when we had the blizzard here. And Marco and I were just supposed to Kind of like with Christos, just talk for a few minutes, like, hey, yeah, we're going to do a movie together. I think we were on the phone for three, four hours. Um, it's just we really clicked and saw eye to eye. And we both I really feel equally care about making the best thing we can. So I, I look forward to us actually being on the ground and working rather than plotting on WhatsApp, which is kind of what we've been doing the last month and a half. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I talked to Marco a few years ago for Savage Dog with Scott and, and Jess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's you know, such an awesome guy to talk to. And then that was when um, he's like, the one movie I was looking forward to that's coming out was Alita Battle Angel because he was in that yes. movie. And then, you know, now now here he is, you know, Scott Atkins and John Wick 4. He's in John Wick 4. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're, they're not getting, I think they're finally getting their due. Thank God. I, I really hope they are um, <laughs> because both of them have definitely put in the work like for years and years now. Um, and I think both of them in different ways really make a great impression in the movie so yeah. i will just I, I hate saying this but we'll i guess we'll have to see um yeah, well but yeah i i hope i really hope that there's eyes on them now that weren't there before yeah i, I definitely agree 
So Breakout is now out, and um, people definitely need to see this movie. I mean, if you just want a good, fun popcorn, uh, die hard in a prison action flick, this is the movie yeah. to see. And such great performances from the cast, including the late Tom Sizemore and the awesome Louis Mandalore, Christos Andrews, and Brian Krause. And Brandon May, once again, you slayed it with this one, man. You Thank did you. a great job. And the fact that Devin, you worked on this one as well as a producer and coming up with the story, I mean, this just sheer awesomeness. Yeah. So, it, it's not a girly movie at all. So I no, think once people not see even close. Name and kind of the creator, they'll be surprised. But right yeah, so. They're, they're going to see, like, holy crap. Like, yeah. and, I'll, <laughs> that, and I was like, when I saw it, I was like, that's awesome. I just said, awesome. That's very manly, terrible. manly movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again, Brandon. I mean, and, and definitely when your next stuff comes out, we're definitely going to have to talk again. I was, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I look forward to it. Soon. Soon. I think three months is the next one without spoiling yeah. the day. Not announced. Yeah. Yet. Yeah, I think definitely. Well, everyone, you take care and you have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. All right.